She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I will bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The coming of the Messiah was eagerly awaited by many Jews in particular. Neither the common people nor the religious leaders would be surprised that he would be born in Bethlehem. For Michael had written it in Michael chapter 5, verse 2. No one, however, expected his coming to happen as it did. The precise location of his birth is less important than the lowliness of his birthplace. 
The two writers, Matthew and Luke, narrate the birth of the Christ with restraint. Luke only mentioned the full end and the manger cradle. The story of the shepherds, Luke's account, and the Magi, Matthew's account, heightened the impression of wonder at the Messiah's birth. There was no outward pump as was expected by many. The lowliness of his birth was fitting. For as the word says in uh, Philippians chapter 2, he humbled himself. So he humbled himself in his incarnation or his humiliation. Both of those words that speak of Christ coming in the flesh humble himself in the incarnation and the humiliation speaks to the lowliness by which he came. Certainly he is the king of the Jews and all of that. But he came to all people. But it appears that those that he came to primarily rejected him. They did not understand that he intended to include the Gentiles in the first place. This was not just an afterthought. Even in his promise, God's promise to Abraham, he also said all the families, all the nations of the world would be blessed through Abraham's seed. Luke chapter 2, verses 7 through 20, we will speak of today and with the subject the good news of extraordinary joy. The good news of extraordinary joy. Three main points we want to emphasize. The first one being revelation to the shepherds. Revelation to the shepherds. Two, revelation to all. Revelation to all. And point number three, joy and peace. Joy and peace. And announce an angel along with a host of other angels appeared to a group of shepherds at night. It's noteworthy to read the recording on how the shepherds, representative of the common people, were appeared, or God revealed himself unto them. The shepherds really in some instances were the spies. But yet they were tasked with looking after not only the sheep for food, but looking after the sheep that would be sacrificed, that would be carried up to the temple on the Passover. So the shepherds were appeared to because they would be the ones that would receive him unlike some of the religious leaders. A group of shepherds being appeared to at night verses 8 and 13 
you can imagine how frightened they would be. The angels herald the birth of the Savior in the city of David or a town called Bethlehem, verse 4. The appearance of the angel and the glory of the Lord terrified the shepherds. The words used literally means they feared greatly or they feared a great fear. But the angels comforted the shepherds by telling them not to be afraid. Chapter 1, 13 and verse 30. The message given was that a Savior, Christ the Lord, was born. This was good news of great joy. In fact, this is the gospel. The word joy in the Greek chara is often associated with salvation. This news was to be proclaimed, proclaimed to all people, to all Israel, but ultimately to all mankind. The company of angels engaged in praising God in the highest. On earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests seemed to describe the proclamation a little better than the King James saying, goodwill toward men. The New International Version really explains it. It says, to men on whom his favor rests. Goodwill toward men, King James Version, versus to men on whom his favor rests by the NIV. In other words, God's peace is given to those who are the recipients of God's goodwill or his favor. Chapter 2, verse 15 through 20, the shepherds went to see the baby. I can hear them saying, let us go see this thing that the angels have made known to us. So they believed what they saw and what they heard. They went and told what the angels had said to them. They believed the message and went to confirm it for themselves. They spread the word and those that heard the message were amazed. The shepherds returned glorifying God and praising him. The shepherds received the message unlike the account in Matthew where Herod the Great lied to his constituents and even the Magi saying that he wanted to go and worship the Christ. But unlike the shepherds who wanted to go and to confirm the truth, he really wanted to try to kill the Christ child. Shouldn't he have known that mankind with all of his schemes cannot thwart or change the plan and the will of God unless God decides to change it himself? Sometimes in his long suffering, things that he has promised us, by his mercy, he gives us more chances. But the fact that this promised deliverer, Jesus the Christ, that Matthew had talked about, that Isaiah 7 and 14 said that he would be born of a virgin. That Isaiah 
said that he would be called Emmanuel. And John's gospel confirmed that he would be God with us. In other words, he says he pitched his tent in John's gospel. He tabernacled with us. But this was prophesied hundreds, perhaps even thousands of years in the book of Matthew. And as forestated that he would be born in Bethlehem, God used a census to have Mary and Joseph go to Bethlehem to Joseph's place of birth. And he had it happen by no mistake but during the reign of Caesar Augustus. Isn't the Lord good? The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God and those that they reached came to find out themselves what the shepherds had said. And then, of course, the shepherds would go on to Bethlehem and find the child. And they would praise God. Eventually, the Meiji would get there and bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But aren't you glad today that as we celebrate this thing that we call Christmas, and we know that it was not on the 25th of December, but it really doesn't matter whether it's 25th of December or not, because we need the mindset of recognizing that God sent his only begotten son wrapped in human flesh, but not the same flesh because Philippians said he wrapped him in the likeness of sinful flesh. It was similar to ours, but it was free of sin. Similar to ours, but the father was not Joseph. The father was God the Father because it was the Holy Spirit that overshadowed Mary and brought forth a son, brought forth a child that was fully, fully human and fully God that would make a great sacrifice but before the great sacrifice would teach and to proclaim the word of God and give the world an opportunity as he still is enabling us to know that he's the one that has been anointed to preach the gospel as Isaiah 61 says that he's the one that will stand in the synagogue as recorded in Luke chapter 4 and read the scripture. And as they did not receive him in the synagogue, some are still not receiving him today. But I'm glad to be a member of the spiritual church and this local church where we believe that Jesus is the Christ and read Rejoice in the peace and the joy that he promised because he made it all possible at Calvary. Glad that he's the Lord. Glad that he's the Savior. Glad that he's the Keeper. Glad that he is our Creator. But glad that in that he's the Creator, he didn't leave us alone. He's still with us now. And during this church age, he has allowed the Holy Spirit to indwell us and we should always remember the blood that he shed at Calvary. Always remember him crying out, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. Always remember that he cried out, it's finished! And that he now sits at the right hand of power interceding for us. Thus we have joy 
and we have peace. We have joy inexpressible and peace and love forever. May God richly bless you. Have a merry, merry